All right, good morning and welcome to the show that you've always wanted to listen to. It's the Sports Buffet on Elegbete TV Radio. My name is A. Daffy Matthew S. Yogane, and I've got with me Joseph Okiche in the studio. Joseph, good morning and welcome to the it's show. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I'm so happy that I've, at last we are successful. <laughs> and, and, and to those of you who are, who are listening out there, I, I apologize for the 15 minutes delay. We're going to make it up with an extra 15 minutes to the show. Okay, so you know technology is good, but then it can also give you problems here and there so we were dealing with our problems i promised you guys that i was going to bring in the one guy that i okay there were three players that i wanted to be like growing up roberto baju uh umphrey jeba and then finiti george and then somewhere i got his nickname worry baju when i was in potakot and then you know there was also dukudi in the mix i've always been a right-sided player i was a left a right fullback and then i became a number seven and let me give you a little background before we go before i bring in my guest on the show so in the last six months i've been trying to get him to do an interview and everybody i speak to those like ah finiti george no that guy is uh finiti george is not somebody you can you can assess who it's not accessible you can't track him or ah finiti george you want to get finiti george ah what are you saying finiti ah, no nah the judge is not is cryptic is uh is this one is that one in my mind i'll be like you know one day one day i'll get him and the funny thing is me and his late younger brother again worry judge are very good friends he actually left my house before he went to go and play that game and we're talking about him moving to ayas and then bros alari his brother too was my friend like okay my big bros but so how do I get him? I've called everybody that I know. So I know if you know the judge is a quiet guy, he's Jason Bond. You can't even track him. I said, okay, let's leave it to fit. So I called the La Liga office and I was like, I have one favor I need you guys to do for me. You guys have been asking me for favor. Now I've come back to ask for one favor. Help me do this and I will not disturb you guys again. And they were like, what is that? And I was like, I need to interview Finney the judge. I need to talk to him. I need, like, I need to go full circle on this. He's the one person I've always wanted to talk to. And I said, okay, ah, it's not going to be easy, but we will try. And eventually, they tried. And here we are today. Guys, please make welcome to the inestimable, the ubiquitous, the amazing, the incredible, Mr. Perfect, the excellent one. Uh, Imama Mapakabo described him this way. That if the judge is the kind of guy who's organizing a party and he invites you and he asks you how many people you're coming with. And you say, I'm coming with 50. If the judge will say, you know what, come with your 50. But then if you get to the gate of the party and you bring 51, if the judge will let 50 people in and tell that one person to go back because he didn't plan for him. The Finetti judge is that kind of guy. He's prime and proper. He is the only organized person he knows in the world. The Finetti judge was the only guy when they were playing for Sharks whose salary doesn't run out because he, that, he doesn't give in to frivolities and wastefulness. And you see that in his game. Uh, please, guys, help me make welcome the amazing and incredible. The guy who gave the first assist for our work, first World Cup goal in 1994 also his combination with daniel amakachi produced the goal in 1993 october 8th in algeria that qualified us for the fifa our first ever fifa world cup what a back heel that was anyway uh good morning and welcome to the sports buffet mr finetti george good morning good morning what a wonderful introduction <laughs> <laughs> well well i really could go very very far in sharing experience i remember when i used to go to gunabali i remember when I, you know a whole lot there's a whole lot to talk about and i remember when you came to sbs uh in 1994 i think it was november or august or so when they were honoring you as the first reverse man was it 95 sorry it was 95 first reverse man that represented river state at the fifa world cup and also scored a world cup goal and the speech the the personality the aura it's a whole lot but we're going to start this for those who don't know you uh there are so many questions that people have thrown in that i should ask you so let's get the grand running straight away uh mr finney george what's your impression of the super eagles of nigeria today knowing that in your days there were two clear cut formation 442 or 4424 and wingers were the strength of our team there's a number seven, there's a number 11. If it is not allowed, it is Amunike. If it's not Amunike, it is Finidi Judge. If it's not Finidi Judge, later we had um, Tijani Babangida. But it was always the white men that determined whether we will score goals or not. What is your impression of the current national team? Um, 
I think we have good players, um, but um, the, the, we have to we have to have a team. You know, I think um, that is the problem we have. Definitely, um, football has changed. You know, over the years, and uh, now you see a, a right foot uh, right footed player is playing on the left side, and the left footed player on the right side. You know. Um, yeah, are we going to see the, the wing football? Mm, I don't know. You know, we keep uh, evolving, and uh, maybe there uh, will come a time, maybe in the in the, the next World Cup, that uh, a team might come back with, you know, playing that formation with um, wing, wingers, real and left and right winger, and then if that works, then maybe other coaches will, 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 might want to emulate that, and the uh, football might change again. But um, the problem we have in, in Nigeria, in Nigerian Super Eagles, is that uh, we have individual good players, but uh, we are yet to put, put up a good team, you know, and then that is up to the coaches and uh, to do that job, you know. Uh, we have, you know, we, we have our players doing very well, you know, lately in Europe, they are playing, they are winning a lot of um, um, trophies, but uh, we have to, you know, get back to the basis and um, see how we can bring that to the national team. But uh, like I said earlier, it has to be the work of the, the technical advisor or the coaches to do that, you know. Get us a good team and um, I think the boys will do very well. All right, talking about our players doing very well, 2021 will go down in history as the year that have produced more winners back from nigeria everywhere you turn to there is a nigerian player winning it they are now winning the fa cup they are winning league they are winning different competition in their countries uh in the country in the leagues where they are playing in and next year we're playing in the african nations cup there are countries that are you know jostling for it there's ghana there's cameroon there is the north african countries and then there's the southern african countries when you look at our team we have strikers striking is not a problem from victor Sime to kelechi yanacho uh, Simi Wanko, Paul Onwachu, uh, Tarek Murphy, and you know, the host of others that are hanging there. But where we used to be very strong back in your day was in the midfield. In midfield, we have Finidi George, Sondo Lise, Austin Jejo Kocha, uh, Edema Fuludu, Friday Lao, Emmanuel Amuniki, and a host of others that are still hanging on the, on the fence. But today, there's only one, I call it one and a half midfielder. We have Wifred in Didi one midfielder and then the half is joe aribo based on the fact that he has not really settled into the team alex wobi does not give you consistency not like he's not a good good player but it doesn't give you consistency play one good game and it takes 10 games to settle in and then uh Ogana carry table who's a hard fighter is actually not a midfielder because it's not a good and excellent passer of the ball and then you also have uh, a few other people in the periphery how can we work at a team to the advantage of the strikers we have we have people scoring 30 goals 20 goals but we don't have the midfielders that will create the chances for them in the national team how can we create a system that will make them work so that we can win the next nations cup um i, I personally think that's my opinion i think um, we have a defensive midfielder which is indeed uh, he's doing a fantastic job yeah but uh, we, we need another player that can um, that can defend, but um, his, his um, potential should be more of attacking. Um, I don't know if 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 I if I have explained that very well. You, you have. have to have another player apart from Indidi. Indidi is a, 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 yeah, Indidi is a major player in in the national team. Apart from Indidi. We should have another player that is based on selection. You know, I'm not, um, I don't belong there in the coaching staff, but I will advise we should try and look for another player. You can as well, they can as well convert players to play different roles. You know, like my days, I started like as a midfielder, but I ended up playing on the right side. You know, so it's, it's a matter of you know, checking the players that we have. Maybe during the friendly games, check them and try to convert players and play in different roles. We need another player that can defend when we lose the ball, but his major role should be 
getting up from the midfield and joining in the attack. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying uh, it should be another judge or coacher, but we should have something similar. A player that can defend, but his major role should be linking up with the wingers and the attackers. I, if we can have that, I think um, it will go a long way and uh, we, we will definitely create, create opportunities to score goals. The attackers will have uh, a lot of opportunities to score goals, you know. So I think that is what is lacking. And it is already there. He's, uh, <laughs> he's a major player in the, in the national team. And um, if we can have another player um, who can help him when we don't have the ball, but at the same time, once we have the ball, he can break through. And then once they give him the ball, you know something is going to happen. So I think um, it's a matter of um, the coaches doing a good job and trying to convert players to play that role. All right, there is uh, one controversy. Uh, two weeks ago, I have uh, gone on this on this interview, and we we're talking about players. And he said he he was hoping of bringing back Odion Igalo. And everybody has been saying for a coach that have this array of stars in attack, why do you need uh, an Odion Igalo? But then he said the reason why he needed Odion Igalo is for experience purpose okay that the young players that are there need somebody to guide them in terms of experience now as much as i want to follow that conversation i am struggling to understand what that means can you help me make sense of it does the super eagles need the experience of igalo right now owing to the fact that we have uh this group of players Ono Achu played 40 games in belgium this season scored 35 goals simi wanko so far played 38 games and scored 20 goals Terry murphy played 35 games 16 goals uh osime victor osime 28 games 10 goals kelechi anacho 38 games 19 goals do they look like a strike force that would still require the experiences of anigalu Um, I don't think so. Personally, I don't think so because uh, these players. Well, I think what they need it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really mean they they, they need uh, an attacker or uh, already we have uh, Ahmed Musa there. I think uh, somebody that has played two World Cups. Uh, he has gone to various Nations Cup. Um, he should be the key figure. I think if he's okay, if he's in the team, he should be. He's a player that players should look up to. At the same time, in as much as they're looking up to, if if the coach wants to bring in uh, a player, um, I don't really see any player that he can bring. In Gallo's time, yeah, he, he retired. He uh, um, personally retired from the national team. So. Bringing him again doesn't really, it will not even create good atmosphere in the team. What I, what I would suggest that um, he should do, he should look at uh, a player who is first team choice player that other players respect. I don't know, I'm not in the team, so I don't know who they respect because you have to respect somebody when uh, you're going through a difficult times. So you have to look up. up onto somebody when that person is speaking others will listen i don't know if they have somebody like that in the team i mean musa i don't know if he's going to be a starter i think he's playing he has gone back to kano pillars trying to get back his form i don't know if he's going to be uh, an important figure in the team if not you you you, you put somebody like him Didi, you know as a captain it doesn't really matter if musa is not going to be there you put somebody that is playing regularly and other players are seen, watching, and they know, ah, this is somebody that we can respect. That, that is a way, you know, to build a team around that, that player. So I don't know, um, just a matter of um, looking at the players he has in the team, who other players respect and what league that player is playing. He, he is playing very, very well. He's a commanding midfielder which other players might want to look at and say, okay, if this guy is talking, he knows what he's talking about. So Igalo doesn't have doesn't have a place in the team. 
All right, thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm still going to put you on the Super Eagles. The Super Eagles is the main stage for us. I'm coming to talking about you, but let's deal with the Super Eagles first. Now, we have five players front runners. We have Simi Wanko, Paul Onoachu, Terry Murphy, and then we have Kelechi Anacho and Victor Osime. From the way Gonna Drop plays, he most likely plays with two, mid, uh, two strikers. If you are in the position of the coach, because you have a coaching badge, so you understand this thing, and you have over 30 years experience playing football, if we add the ones that you time you were playing from FA quarters, close to Budu Waterside, um, at Churchill Field and the rest, we're going to come to that anyway. It could be like all your life. You play football all your life, you understand football. Who are the two strikers you mostly likely will start and then keep the others on the bench? Well, uh, uh, for me, Osimen is is going to start as uh, number nine. Um, it's supporting cast. Yeah, he can pick uh, depending on on the opponents um, who we are playing against. What is our strength in the midfield? And then you can bring in a Nacho or any other any other any other striker that you know and drop deep and help in the midfield. Um, for me, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really matter, but uh, you must have uh, a number nine who you know um, will give you any time, any day, the goals. And uh, for me, I will start with Kosine. Uh, um, and um, yeah, every other player uh, must play around Kosine. It uh, doesn't matter if you, to me, as a, if if I'm if I'm given the job now, we play that guy because he has the the, the, the pace, he can score. He doesn't need um, three chances to score a goal. If he has one, he's going to he's going, he's going to score. So I prefer an attacker that of that caliber to be in my team. And then uh, every other player, I will see how I can you know uh, make them fit with the style of play. Of the national team, so uh, for me, mm, Simi number one, and he's going to play all the time. And then um, Yenacho, um, yeah, others can come in every now and then. We had that um, in 1994. Sometimes some Mokachis play, sometimes something CSF play. So it's a combination depending on the opponent. You know, but uh, you must have a key player who has to be there all the time. You, know, you don't have to be changing number nine every now and then. Or number ten, you can depending on the on the team you we are playing, you make sure you bring somebody that can really give you that uh, uh, that result. So um, for me, it doesn't really matter. I will go with my number nine on the first. All right, you talk about the 1994 team, and you know I I have a lot of problem with that squad anyway. Uh, most members of the squad, not everybody, but most members of the squad. I'm gonna ask these questions uh, that bothers me a lot. The class of 94, are you people friends now that you are retired? Yeah, yeah, yeah we are friends. Um, yeah, we, we sometimes we meet, you know, we don't call all the time, we don't, uh, uh, some have some uh, um, best friends, you know, when you leave sometimes to, uh, to work place, you try to you know, have some friends if 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 that's possible. But, uh, myself personally, I I, I, I speak with Amunike, with you, Ike Shurumu, um, all the time. Even uh, I spoke with uh, Shurumu yesterday. Uh, so I speak with every now and then. I speak with Amunike, and um, with you sometimes we, we 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 talk every now and then. You know, for the rest, when we meet. Definitely, yeah, we embrace ourselves and uh, um, talk about um, new things, about past things, you know. But um, I, me personally, I get along with everybody. So um, some 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 players might not be, you know, uh, too friendly with um, one another, but uh, that is not my case. And I think majority of the, the ex players, whenever we meet. Yeah, there's a good good rapport between between us. Um, I don't think there's there's any any problem between the ex players. 
he played quite a lot. He played under quite a lot of coaches. There was Clemens Vestov, there is Bonfrey Joe, there is Tij Libret, um, Bora Militinovic, Filippi Truzzi. Uh, I don't know if he played under Betty Vogues, Amodo Schwaibu, Onig. No, I don't think he played under Betty Vogues. Now, let's come down to all of these coaches. Which one, or uh, maybe your top three? coaches when you played in the national team top three yes sir uh i'll go clement best off number one um and i'm not uh, i think number two um yeah um third third coach um um who else who else who else who else, who else? Um, let's say um and um, bumfrey joe okay so i was i was waiting for bumfrey joe as a football person from outside of the field i always said in my mind that the most tactically astute coach that i saw with the national team Maybe my management not not the best, but was Bonfrey Joe. This is my opinion. I might be wrong, but you played under them. The game Nigeria in 2000, Nigeria versus South Africa. We did something that we've not done before. We moved you. Uh, he moved you back to your traditional position as a midfielder. Took Tijani Bangida to the left hand side and altered the team. Walk us through the team talk before that game against South Africa, where we beat them. To, took them to the cleaners walk us through the the preparation the team talk because that was not the super egos we were used to in terms of selection in terms of how the players line up but it worked out well what did he say to the team what did he see in the opposition team why did he move to Johnny Bamangida? why did he move to Fini the judge to midfield and how did the team react um yeah we are all uh, we are all professionals and uh, sometimes like i was saying earlier you you try to move players depending on the opponent you know so i think um, we saw that uh, we could we could really do damage and uh, babangira is playing on the right side and maybe i am playing in midfield and uh, to control a little bit with uh, i think police um so i came back to my original position which i i i, I knew how to do best and um yeah, we all clicked together, and um, I think Baba Gida had a fantastic team that day. So um, we don't have a problem, um, because we understand we are professionals and we, we, we serve the nation. Um, sometimes coaches might make a uh, um, few slight changes, and um, just for us to adapt and uh, um, see how we can we can do that in training. Once everything went well in training, we knew definitely we we'll, we'll have a good day. And, We've been waiting for South Africa for a very long time because of uh, you know the 1996 Six. Uh, Nations Cup that uh, all sorts of things happened politically that uh, had nothing to do with us and uh, we regretted not going to that Nations Cup. So we haven't missed that Nations Cup. There was a lot of talks about uh, in South Africa would have beaten Nigeria at our peak, you know. So we we had that in mind going into that game. So uh, um, full, we were all time, all time high, mm, motivated in that game, you know. So uh, I think uh, we, we had a good game. It's just a, a little uh, team talk where the coach, uh, actually we trained about, we trained before that game, two days before that game. And I knew I was going to play in the midfield. It was not a sudden, sudden change. He told me, and I said, "Okay, that's fine." And um, yeah, everything just worked out perfectly. So uh, sometimes coaches can do that, and uh, you have to see, you have to know the, 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 the caliber of players you have in the team, and uh, maybe they can do the job. And uh, like I said earlier, the the, the coach now. Of the super groups has to see in his in his lineup or his team who can help play 
like I was explaining within DD, at the same time helping attack. So you can convert players and they will give you the best result that um, you've ever <laughs> thought about. So um, it was a good game against South Africa and uh, I'm happy that we won that game. Instead, that's by the fact that I was playing in a different position, which I think I did very well. Okay, so let's bring uh, you into the, the center circle. We'll be talking to my all this while now. Uh, let's start with the beginning. Okay, uh, I'm going to go deep uh, because one, even though I was g- raised in Delta, I consider myself a Portacot boy. So, uh, pardon me when I'm you. <laughs> yes, when you start hearing me call names and you're like, where well, did this boy know all these things? Okay, I got some assistance from you know family members and friends anyway but let's start with this you grew up in fa quarters close to budu waters as water side as i've said before you play street football at churchill field and you know there's a mama put you regularly visit at ugbona bali woke street to be precise okay and then you played for Ajib football club before you signed for shark what's up with that mama put in woke street why do you always go there um, you know, when uh, <laughs> you sometimes you need good food, and uh, when you have a, a low budget, <laughs> 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 like we used to have back then, uh, you know, uh, you you try to you know make ends meet, and um, I think that 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 lady was really cooking very well, and um, it was very close to where I was staying, and uh, yeah, after training. We ain't got the time to come back and cook, so we just um, get the good food, you know, with, that is very cheap, that we can afford, you know, <laughs> that I could afford back then. So um, that, that was it, you know, that, 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 that mama put, I would put it that way. The lady was cooking very, very well, so delicious food and cheap. Okay, uh, let's go back to your amateur days you were playing in the pdafa league from secondary school how did you manage secondary school and football knowing fully well that back in the days our parents don't even want to hear that we want to play football and if i understand river state very well river state is a state of great that take great pride in their children going to school it is and the average german wants his child to go to school Political science, law, doctor, medicine, something, but football is not it. How did the Finidi household allow their son? You know, let's not forget that you have uh, Prakatemi George, you have Alari George ahead of you, and then you are playing PD, PDFA league, and then you're going to school. How were you able to manage this? Um, it was not easy because, um, like you rightly said, my dad didn't approve of it. I've said it, I've said this um, uh, thousands of times. Uh, I had um, arguments, but it was my mom that, uh, you know, I had a talk with my dad that uh, if if I could combine both, and uh, yeah, just let it be, you know, that we'll see what happens. So that, that was how, um, yeah, my my dad, you know, relented on the, on on you know, discouraging me, and playing football, you know. So it was a it was a difficult time. I didn't know I was just playing for fun, you get me. But um, uh, but the, at at the, at the point in time, it was difficult to really combine schooling and playing football because I was playing for Ajib. Back then, and um, they pick me at school. I go and train with um, older players. And uh, when I come back um, to school, um, because I was in a boarding house then, when I come back to school, you know, I was very, very tired, you know, to even study. You know, so it was uh, it was a difficult time, but um, I was dedicated. I knew I had to, you know, go through and uh, make sure I finish my, my secondary school. And, uh, after that, um, the rest is history. Everything changed. Things went so quickly, and uh, from there I went to Sharks, uh, NNPC, NNPC Sharks, Shark Talabarova, came back, you know, before I traveled to Europe. So it was um, a rapid process, 
when I finished in secondary school. So um, today I can look back and say, yeah, it all paid off. <laughs> yeah, you, you did pay it off. Uh, in Port Harcourt, uh, my time, uh, there are mostly three ways or four ways you can sign for Sharks. Either you go for the open screening or Amanda Sinclair sees you or Adokia Mesimaka sees you and that's going to be luck. That's very the extreme. Or somebody recommends you. Who signed you for Sharks? How did it work? Was it Daddy? As Monde Sinclair and I asked, we call him Daddy. Uh, that saw you and said, this boy, I need you in my team. Because Monde Sinclair have very high standard. You have to have perfect control of the ball. You have to be this. You have to be that. How did you sign for Sharks? Um, I, will, I, will, I will say, uh, back then, I was playing for NNPC. And... Um, we had um, um, Rivers 88, the sports festival, national sports festival. And um, I was invited because you want to invite young players and mix them up with some other um, older players, with sharks and others. So I was doing very, very well. In it. So I was invited to the camp. So uh, myself, Colin Setebu, uh, this one guy, Kennedy, Kennedy or Kuba or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think Kennedy. So we were, we were playing for NNPC. Myself, Colin, and I think a couple of, couple of players that were selected, we were all in the same team. So we went to the camp. So um, I was a Mifi player. So... During that time, uh, during the sports festival, I was playing alongside uh, uh, one, I think, um, a Ghanaian. It's, a, uh, it's a something. Uh, we did very well and won gold. So after the tournament, Shark started picking players, you know, from that, um, from that squad. And they picked two players. That were my teammates. So they were already going to Sharks. I was not selected then, but Thompson Tomanuel and others, they were, you know, they told uh, Daddy uh, Monday Sinclair like that this is the man, this man that you don't want to sign. This is the key player of that. Uh, uh, that, uh, that our festival team. This is the, you cannot leave this guy out and pick those stuff up to because this is the main guy. So they were like reluctant in signing me. Like, are you sure? Are you not sure? So finally they signed me. So when I got to Sharks, then I had to prove to them that yes, I was a man. Then that was why right when Daddy was like, wow, without this man, I don't think uh, we can do well, you know. And uh, Mark had a very good season with Sharks. Uh, Rovers came, you know, calling, and uh, I had to go to Rovers, where I spent two years, and from Rovers to national team. That was how everything started. Okay, so uh, do you remember your first game at Sharks? How did you feel as a Port Harcourt boy playing for the biggest club in the land, Sharks? I know people, Eagles Cement fans, will not agree with me on this one, but now their business. And they can squeeze their face as you like. Uh, playing for Sharks, do you remember you were going, you were also very young at the time when you played for Sharks? Yes, I think um, I was very, very young and um, I could remember my first trip, you know, going to, I think going to the north, you know, with um, the Sharks boss, with all the players inside. And then we we'll stop along, along the road, you know, after maybe three, three, four hours. <laughs> yeah. The road trip, you know. After three, four hours, we we'll stop somewhere, maybe local jar or whatever, you know, eat something, buy some some food stuff on the road, continue the journey. Sometimes get there. So it, it, it was really, really uh, big and um, experience for me, you know, um, traveling for the first time. Leaving Port Harcourt for the first time, you know, uh, it was it was it was good. It was good, you know. But I can't really remember my first game, but um, I think I came in as a sub, and um, I, I tried to do my best. And I think I had a good game. 
after that, in training also, try to train very, very well. And then at the, at the point, you know, on Monday, that it simply, you know, I just felt I was a man for the midfield, and uh, that was how I held on to that position. Okay, so back in the day, the rivalry that we used to have was more from the east, the eastern part of Nigeria and the south. Okay, so you have teams like Calabar Rovers, Zenyiba Football Club, Vasco da Gama, Rangers, Udoji United. Which was your biggest game as a player for Sharks back then? Hmm. I think maybe biggest game against Iwanyo. I think against Iwanyo or I think 3 Wow. That were started with a uh, Mr. Gibabib of Aladdin, uh, Golden, uh, Jebbo, you know, a lot of a lot of good, good, good players, you know. And then we played them in Port Harcourt and we, we, had, we had a good game and we won that game. So uh, I think that would be a memorable and um, best game, you know. Uh, something happened in 1989. In 1989, you were in a great Sharks team with the likes of Noel Ayamu, Kayode Solomon, Kingsley, Ese Muse, Sonny, Ese Kema, Kennedy, uh, Okoba, uh, who they call Waibo, uh, Fubara, Owonaro, Okechuku, Wabi Kizi, and Isa Ibrahim. I think he's a Ghanaian guy, Alote. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with these guys? Um, some of them, Isa Rahim Alote, uh, yeah, I've not, I've not spoken to that guy in ages. Uh, Sonny, Sonny Sakoma, these are people I see, you know, uh, Kennedy Okuba, these are people I see in Potako because uh, I'm a Potako boy. Uh, whenever I, I go back, um, whenever I'm in Nigeria, I'm always in Potako, so. I see these guys, Kingsley, Zemuzi, I think it's in Canada, we still get in touch. Okechuku, um, Okechuku, is in U.S., we still get in touch. Um, yeah, well, I, I talk with uh, most of these guys every now and then, you know, it's not on a regular basis, but uh, whenever we see, we talk. Uh, sometimes we communicate on, um, on Facebook. You know, so it's a good experience. It's a long time, but uh, you know, we've grown. Uh, we have um, families now. We have friends, different friends, different atmosphere. So, but whenever we see ourselves, definitely we recognize that uh, we are brothers, and um, we, we we talk to one another. All right. So in 1990, something uh, that was kind of like sweet and bitter. Uh, 1990 Sharks failed to play in the first ever Nigerian Professional Football League. Okay, even though uh, you guys won the promotion from the old Division Two, you and Kayode in turn now left <laughs> to play for Calabar Rovers. Honestly speaking, you broke the heart of many people in River State. Why did you leave, and why did you pick Calabar Rovers? Um. You know, because uh, I think Calabar Rovers uh, was a team that was um, star-studded, uh, very, very good. They had the likes of um, Friday Echo, Ene Okun, Uwe Mikareka, you know, a lot of um, uh, a lot of good players, and um, they were paying a little bit. <laughs> it's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, it, it, at the point, it was a little bit financial also because I wanted to try something new and uh, yeah, they came up with sign-on fee and then they paid a little bit of um, salary more than sharks. Um, so we all we all left, you know, myself, um, Okuchuku, Imama was there already, so he told us. All the good things that uh, they, 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 are, they, are, they are doing in Calabar Rovers. And uh, so, with the help of him, Mama, we all went there and uh, yeah, we had fun. Okay, so uh, now you'd mentioned him, Mama, like, in your conversation with him, Mama, and so many things he had to say. In Sharks and Potter even when I came to Sharks, that was always a conversation. 
you, you can't you just be like Finney the judge can't you 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 know you need to do it. oh god I wish you 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 understand you could understand football like Finney the judge and in my head i'll be like not that Finney the judge would receive for national team how can we play like that we can't but no you were known as the disciplined guy keeping to training schedule and even doing some work on your own after normal training is over where did you get that from because it's not a normal nigerian thing like after training you go and train yourself again where did you get that from and um, how did that discipline help you with the super eagles ayas betis ishwishtan ray mayoka and the rest of them yeah we just um i think um uh, it's just hard work you know hard work and uh, sometimes uh we we, we jump to training you know because uh and we want to do it, you know. But for the fact that sometimes you don't even have transport money to go to training, take the taxi. So we just we just jog from, uh, sometimes I jog from Gunabad to the Shark Stadium, you know. Which is maybe two, two and a half, three kilometers. Uh, you, we jog there because, <laughs> uh, not because, so when you, you, you start doing that, um, and you know, okay, this is helping you. Uh, it becomes part of you. So um, sometimes hardship will make you uh, have that working mentality. You know? So I think um, sometimes we, we, I did that and um, because I didn't have it. And then that became part of me. And, uh, you know, long, along the way, um, it helped me because... Uh, that work ethics helped me in the Super Eagles as well. You know? So I think um, training, working very hard, um, it's always going to pay off. You know? So I think uh, we've been working and we worked so hard while in the Super Eagles also. While I was not in Ajax, we were training, I was home based. But whenever we go to camp in uh, Basenjoe Farms in Ota, we worked so hard, training myself at Jiba Day. We would wake up 5 a.m. We are running. We come back. We do one hour running. 5 a.m. to, to 6 a.m. From that 6, we will have breakfast. We will shower and have breakfast. 8:39, we are going to the Honda uh, field to train. You know, so all these uh, work ethics help me. You know, when I was traveling out to Ajax, and um, yeah, I, when I when I went to Ajax, I will, I will just tell you something now. When I went to Ajax for, for trials, um, I told myself they will, they will not kick me out because uh, they, they, I, I told myself I will never kick out, or Ajax will not send me away for being a lazy player. They might send me away for not having the quality to play. You know, that was what I told myself because I knew I was fit enough and um, I would do everything in my possibility um, not to be lazy, to be there all the time and give my best in training. So that was what I did. I and mean, I think uh, this work ethics that I had during my time in Nigeria helped me a lot. You know, and I took that to Betis, uh, Mayoka, Ipswich Town, you know. So I think um, it's always good to, to, to work very hard. Okay, so we've been talking about the perfect side of life. Uh, where's my red card now? Uh, so, uh, did you ever experience this in your career? Whether as an amateur player, Nigerian League player, anywhere. You ever get a red card? And you look back, okay, why did I get a red card? Mm, I can't remember. I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. Not on um not not I, I yeah, I, not on uh, bad play, not on um you know, talking, you know, some some players have big mouth and talk to the referee and, you know uh, the referee, you know, just send you send you away. You know, I've never had that. I'm always a, uh, I think my 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 emotions. I keep them inside, and I try to do the best, you know, on the on the, on the field, you know. And uh, I don't let 
you know, extraction, other little things get me started. And um, yeah, I just did my best. I never had a red card. I All can't right. remember, but I think no, I never had a red card. There's no history of it even. Footballers are also known to be very promiscuous. They like women a lot. And they also spend big money when they have it. And they are very loud. Uh, can we tell us your story with Potakot girls? Let's not forget, Potakot girls, if you don't look for them, they will look for you. I stayed in that town. Give us your own story. Um, uh, definitely, we all, uh, we all went out. We all chased women. <laughs> and we, we, knew, we knew how the town was. Uh, but you, you just, you know, there, there must be limitations in everything you do, and that's self-discipline. Uh, it's not that I did not, I did not chase women, I did that. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I knew that there should be a limit, you know, in, in whatever thing that you do, and uh, there must be, you must be disciplined, you know, in every aspect in your life, you know, being at the workplace, even drinking, even, yeah, in everything, you know, if you, even the food you eat, if you, if you overeat what is needed, yeah, you, you get blown, you, you will blown up, you know, so, and uh, you enjoy yourself, we do everything bit by bit, yeah, definitely we, we had some drinks as well, um, had some women, but there's always limits, limitation to everything you do, so I think, um, that was what I did, you know. I definitely, I had some some girls, uh, I had some drinks. Uh, I did not smoke. That I, I, that I, I can say I did not smoking was not my thing. Um, but yeah, every every bit of everything that um, a young man should be doing, I think I did that. But there, there was limitation to it. Uh, some somewhere in March, you celebrated your son Kevin's 18th birthday. When I saw it, like, wow, wow, can you just have a very big child like this? It was nice. Talk to me about your family, marriage, children. Talk to talk to us about your family. Like nobody really know you, but I'm trying to. So let's get to. I'm, when I say nobody know you, let me try and make you understand. I'm not talking the footballer. If anybody doesn't know the footballer, then that person have a problem. I'm talking about knowing you inside. Like, is Finney the judge married? Does he have children? If you have children, how many children does he have? What are they? Are they playing football? What are they doing? Talk to us. Let me, like, let me and my audience know you and from the family side. Um, yeah, um, I used to be a family man. I'm not anymore. So, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was married back, back in the early 2000s, um, but got got divorced. Um, I think uh, four years ago. So. Um, yeah, and based on that marriage, I have two kids, a boy and a girl, you know, so um, I'm a private person and uh, I, never, I never want to, you know, put my family out there. Uh, but I think um, it's, you know, as, uh, as a father, you, you always get happy when, you, when you, you're able to raise your, your son to, to that adult age. And uh, that was why I shared that, you know, so that people don't. Don't think, ah, this man, is he, is he, he's so strange or he doesn't have children, you know. But since I did not put my, my family out there, yeah, um, I, was, I, was, I was quite happy, you know, that with my, my son to that age, you know, that was why I shared that, you know. And uh, for the first time, I'm, I'm putting my son out there. But I have a son and a daughter. Uh, my, my daughter, my daughter is, is 15 already, so my son is 18, my daughter is 2. So. Um, thank, yeah, that, that's but that's my life. So, thank you, thank you so uh, much. I'm, for, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of I'm kind of single, uh, but um, are you searching? Be, are you searching? Can I be your hookup man? No, no, no. Already, already <laughs> I have. Okay. 
<laughs> Recently, uh, earlier this year, I spoke with Roy McKay. Roy McKay that won the Spanish La Liga with the, the Portugal La Corona and then played for Bayern Munich, the Dutchman. And he ma mentioned to you okay. that, that Fini the George, that when he was coming into the rank, Fini the George was one of the players he always wished was crossing the ball to him because of the way you play the ball. Are you, you make it easy that even a baby can score with your cross. That's what he said. Uh, because it, it was a good header of the ball. And I remember you were voted, you were you were described as the best crosser of the ball between 1995 and I think 1997. Before we, now start, before we had Wim Junk and then David Beckham and the rest of them. And I know, I know that as a footballer, crossing is not a talent. It's something you practice. How did you master the art of perfect precision crosses like you used to do in your time? Um, I don't know if that is, uh, I don't know if it's inborn or training, but I, I would say what really helped me uh, because, uh, like you know, I was a midfield player. In my early days, I was a midfielder. And, uh, you know, when you're playing in the midfield and you're feeding these players on the right side and the, the number nine, um, you have to give them accurate passes, you know, or precise um, passes. So I think that helped me. So when I was converted to play on the right side, based on my speed, um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't that difficult for me to adapt, you know, because I'm used to giving those passes, but in, in a different position. So when I was I was converted to play on the right side, I tried to do the same, and then I think everything worked out, you know. Uh, you know, you, you pinpoint um, players that you want to give that pass to, which is very, very difficult, you know. Uh, but um, in a way, everything worked out very, very well. You know? So I don't know if you can. Definitely, you can train on it. You can train on it. Um, but in my time, when I was growing up, I did not train on giving. We, we, we were not even playing on the regular and um, smooth um, field pitches. You know, so. Um, sometimes you have to look at the ball very well when the ball is coming to you, bouncing, you know, moving from one place to the other. You, you have to control the ball very well on this stuff. But um, I could be able to, to learn the game very, very well. And uh, yeah, every, the, the rest was the um, rest was history. So. One of the things they say about Monday Sinclair, and I regard him as one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in Nigeria, even though he didn't get to win the Nigerian League, is that if you train under, under Monday Sinclair, you will be an expert in ball control. And when you look at Finidi's game, I saw you score a goal for Real Betis. Uh, the ball was moving in the midfield. You drifted from the wing and you were at the center forward position and they just crossed the ball. The goalkeeper was away from his line a bit and just one touch the ball was in the net. Now, for a non-footballer, you just said that's a goal. But for a footballer, I know that the techniques it requires to hit a ball like that with the side of your foot and buried in the net is difficult. How influential was Monday Sinclair in the molding and forming of your style of play? Um, I think very, very important because um, I can recall when we were in Sharks, um, Monday Sinclair was, was always saying that even this field that we're going to train on, even if it's water law, we should be capable of playing the ball. You know, playing the ball in the air and train that way. The ball shouldn't drop. You know, I could recall when we were saying that if only to stop water law, we're going to train. And uh, we have to play the ball in the air. You know, from one, one point to the other. You know, that was how he, you know, emphasizes on control, you know. And uh, we all, we, we learned that, you know, we learned that where we were training under him. And then we knew, um, because of the, 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 the way we grew up, without good quality of uh, football fields in, in Port Harcourt back then, your control should be perfect. 
for you to be able to, to play. If you want to play and you, 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 you cannot control the ball under that situation or that condition, then it will be difficult for you to even pass the ball. So first thing you have to do is control. So we were, I think the, the, the condition we played uh, we learned football helped us a lot. If you learn football, you only have to concentrate in looking at the ball when the ball is bouncing. You don't know where the ball is going to fall. So, um, and that, that, that helped us. And then when you have a coach that is always talking about ball control, without ball control, you don't have a, you don't have a chance. You know, um, you just have to learn it. Just have to learn. I think, um, you know, all those things helped us to perfect the ball control. And I think um, it, it really helped me in my later stage in, in, in my career. All right. Uh, one man that we cannot stop, uh, we cannot have this interview and not mention is Louis Van Gaal. Louis Van Gaal recently was a coach of Manchester United. And people kind of like felt like, oh, he doesn't know how to coach. His style is not good. Talk to me about Louis Van Gaal. The Louis Van Gaal you know, apart from this one that people talk about in Manchester United, the Louis Van Gaal you know and his methodology. I think um, he's a very good coach. Van Gaal is a very, very good coach. Um, tactically sound coach. Um, but but the, 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 he has a problem. Okay. The problem he has is not that he, he has ego problem. He feels he's going to work when you play with uh, young players that are looking up to you that you are Vanga. Then it's going to work. If he, if he has a young, talented players that don't have that name, definitely he's going to have success. But um, whenever he's having problems, is when that ego comes that uh, I'm Bangal, I'm this, I know it all. Then he has some other top players. He had that problem also. Uh, when At Barcelona, Barcelona, with Stoichkov. Yeah. With Stoichkov, Luis Figo. These are top players that are earning a lot of money. And you come, you tell them, you are not doing, you have to control like this. You have to be like, you know, they're like, what is he talking about? This guy is crazy. So he, he had that same in Manchester United, where you have a lot of players earning 10, 12, 13 million. Uh, uh, yeah, the ego comes in. And if you tell them you are the best, they also, they are looking at you and saying, okay, what have you won the last 10 years? Or the last five years, what, 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 what have you won? Have you won the Champions League? Have you won the World Cup? So mm, that was where he had that, you know, lot of heads with some, some, some top players. Okay, so I think, I think personally, he's a very, very good coach, very sound coach. Okay, uh, I also think he's a great coach anyway. Uh, let's talk about one deal that didn't go through. You were playing for Betis. Uh, the whole of Nigeria, in short, there were headlines already. Finidi George signs for uh, Real Madrid. Finidi George wear number so 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 in Real Madrid. Finidi George, everything was Finidi George Madrid. And somehow, we never saw you wear the jerseys of the Roger Blancos. What happened? Um, yeah, I would say it was unfortunate. I think. Um... There were talks, you know, uh, um, yeah, going on. But um, at the end of the day, I, I had a contract with Ajax, and uh, if you want me out of, you have to buy, you have to buy me out of my contract. And, um, at that point in time, Real Madrid didn't have money like they, they have now, <laughs> and they were struggling financially and. They already bought a lot of players uh, like Suke, Miyatovic, Sidov, Roberto Carlos, Ridondo. And um, yeah, Ajax didn't want to negotiate or didn't want to um, you know, bring that transfer sum a little bit lower than uh, what I had in my contract. So at the end of the day, they didn't come to an agreement. That was why the deal was not... Um, the deal didn't go through. For that reason, it was just financial. It was not that um, they didn't want me, but it was because, yeah, they couldn't come to an agreement. Real Madrid, I didn't come to an agreement 
on the price that they have to pay. So, okay, so, okay, so finally, we've come to the end of this conversation. And normally, when I get a star player like this, I like to make them pick from the players you've played with all your career. Give us your first 11 your first 11 the goalkeeper right foot defenders whatever formation you want to play but the players you've played with your teammates both for national team club side nigeria league is pushed it switched and mallorca rebetis ayas everywhere wow um wow uh, that's a difficult one i will show um, so it's all around the level yes all around the level from everything yes team. yeah everyone just speak okay. your goalkeeper uh, your defenders just speak i will go i will go with goalkeeper i will go with um goalkeeper i will go with fandisa okay maybe fandisa um Number two, I will go with. Uh, number two, I will go with uh, Michael Rizike. Okay. Um, in the centre forward, I will go with. No, you start with your defenders, so, so that we don't miss it up. Completely. No, I will start with my defenders. Okay. Number two, now I will go to. Uh, centre back. Three. Okay, number three. Number yeah, number three, I will go with. Uh, I will go with Benny Roa. Great. Then um, the, 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 the four, the guys, uh, the, the, the center, center backs, I will go with um, um, Uke Kechuku uh, and Danny Blind. Fantastic. Then in the middle, I will go with. Uh, um i'll go with in the middle i'll go with uh i'll go with sunday lisa and then if we're playing the the, the, the the triangle you know facing down i'll go with sunday lisa then uh, i'll go with in the middle i'll go with uh ronald the blue then lead money in the middle as the triangle. Olisa, uh, Ronald the Bull, lead money. On the left side, I will go with. Uh, on the left side, I will go with Mark Overmars. Uh, I cannot put myself. No, there. no, no, you cannot. I'm not going to be there. No, you're, uh, you're, you're the coach, the you're right not the player. Side, on the right side, I will go with uh, Alfonso Perez Munoz. Wow. Then my number nine, uh, my number nine, number nine, that I played with, number nine. I will go with uh, number nine, I will go with Samuel Eto. Wow, Samuel Eto. Uh, thank you very much, Finney the Judge. I, I honestly would uh, talk to you for the whole of the day. Like, I'm seeing a demigod in front of me, you know. But thank you very much for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again. My regards to your daughter okay. and your son, Kelvin. And my regards to the family. But as I go, do you have any shout out, any message for your fans in Nigeria and all over the world? Because, I mean, they're listening to us all over the globe. Do you have any message? Is there anything coming from the stables of Finiti George? Like, you're going to coach your team, you want to do this. Is there anything coming up that we don't know yet that you want to let us into? Um, I would just say we should all stay, stay safe. Um, that of coaching definitely to come. If not this year, maybe next year. I'll just wait for my time, you know, but um, we should all stay safe. And uh, yeah, it's a difficult time with uh, the pandemic, but then uh, we should all stay safe. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fini, the judge. Uh, they call him Mr. Perfect. Uh, what was your nickname growing up, anyway? Apart from Finito. My nickname? Yeah, what was your nickname, apart from Finito? No. Sure. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so yeah, I've heard that name before. All right, thank you very much, Vanity Judge. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's the great Finidi George, a great guy. Uh, I don't know, I can't describe him in one word. I would say, hold on, I'm like a baby in uh, a candy shop, and I'm given the choice to pick everything in a candy shop. Like, I'll dream, I would drunk myself in the shop. That's exactly how I feel right now. But it's great having Finidi George on the show today. Uh,